Sorry, I'm running a little bit late here. But welcome. And oh, we're on the wrong screen. Hang on, let me change my background. We are in. Dun, 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 dun. There it is, rewriting reality. Oh, welcome everyone to Rewriting Reality. I am Shiraz. I am your reality shifting specialist. That is my book right there, How to Rewrite Reality. And it is currently on sale on Amazon. The ebook is only 99 cents. We're trying to get a discount on the paperback, but there's some technical difficulties. But uh, right now, if you're interested in that book, get on there, grab a copy, share a copy, gift it to people. It's, it's a really good book. You should read it. So in this show, it's, it's technically a call in, but you're calling in through the Zoom. And I've got a bunch of people already. Wow, I think this is the most attendees I've seen on this show, which makes me very, very happy. And I am going to be talking with different people on the show. And when I have conversations with you, I can tell when your conscious beliefs match your subconscious beliefs. And whenever they don't, you are lying. And you know, I really, I don't care if you're lying to me. I care if you're lying to you. So just moving some stuff here to make sure I've got everything working. Okay. And so when I, when I talk to you, I'm going to ask you questions about your life. And let's say I say, um, you tell me, you know, I, I'd love to be in a new relationship. Record-breaking reality shift. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm breaking records today. I'm getting the highest attendance on my workshops uh, ever, so that's fun. So let's say you say to me, you want to be in a relationship, and I read the energy, but I said, no, you don't actually want to be in the relationship. So we will dig down and find out why you don't want to be in that relationship. And it could be that you just got out of a horrible relationship, you had your heart broken, and you want to make sure you never get your heart broken again. Well, the best way to make sure your heart doesn't get broken is to not be in another relationship, right? So even though consciously you're like, you know, I'd like something that wasn't like the one before. I want something great. I want something that is just so full of joy. At a subconscious you love, level, you're like, but, the, but I want to avoid everything bad that happened. And, you know, the best way to avoid that stuff, not to have it. So when I find out that that's the belief that's running in you, I'll make you aware of it. I'll say, this is what's going on. And I'll say, are you willing to destroy that belief? If you say yes, and you mean it, you need to mean it, then that belief gets snuffed out in the moment. And when that happens, there's a shift in energy because everything is energy, including your beliefs. And my body reacts to energy. So I will yawn or I will, <laughs> sorry, now people are using the QA system too. How do I know if I'm muted? I can't see the video or mic icon. Well, right now you guys are all attendees. And when I talk to you, I'm gonna promote you to panelists and then you'll be able to see the mic and, and the camera icon. You can come on and have a chat with me. So stand by for that. So when you say yes, it shifts. I'm going to yawn or cough because that's how my body reacts. I, it, I don't know why, but when energy shifts, that's just what happens to me. And so you can be expect to hear that a lot over the next hour. And for you, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, for some of you that are on here who I've worked with before, I know exactly what's going to happen. But for the new people, you may yawn. You may just feel like a shift inside of you. You may get hot. Someone was sweating on a call earlier today. Uh, another girl was actually cold on the call earlier today. So it goes either way. I've seen muscle twitches. Uh, I have seen farting. Well, heard farting. <laughs> and I guess smelt farting. Okay, I'm getting too much detail now. Uh, but... This is, this is what happens. And luckily, you know, you're all in, you're in your little home, so you can do whatever you want, wherever you are. But this is the nice thing is I'm, I'm here working on these people. You are watching me live or you are watching the replay and the energy goes out to you anyway. So when I ask that person, are you willing to destroy that belief? You can say yes, and it will shift for you. And if it's the exact belief and you realize you have that same belief, 
then when I say destroy the belief, say yes. If it's similar, if I'm talking about someone's father, but you have the same problem with your cousin, you can make that mental switch and say, okay, I'm going to say yes is in regards to my cousin, and it will shift for you. And my advice is, even if you don't think it applies to you, it might be there, but you don't know it because we're talking about the unconscious beliefs. So you may not think it's yours, but it is yours. Say yes anyway. So if it is there, let's just wipe it out. So that's what's going to be happening here. Now, you, hear me, you may hear me say ow every now and then. And that's because the person I'm working on is going into resistance, which means I may say something like, are you willing to destroy the belief that uh, you can't have fun and make money. And they have this deep-seated belief that in order to make money, you've got to work hard. It's not satisfying unless you're working hard. And if you're having fun, you're not really working hard. It's You're not being responsible. And that's what they've been taught and what they've been growing up with. And they're like, I'm not letting go of that. And it, I can feel that resistance. And, and it doesn't really hurt, but it comes up as like an energetic pain that's, that's happening, like dead air is being thrown at me. And so that's why I say, ow. And, and it's just that resistance you're putting on there. And when you're in that kind of resistance, that's usually a belief we want to dig into and pull out because it's keeping you trapped in a big way. So watch for me saying how. And, uh, and again, everyone's going to get the benefits of this on the replay or right now. So I think that's about it. We've got uh, some hands up of people that want to be worked on, which amusing to me because it's the hands of the people that were in the last workshop that I never got to. So maybe they'll have an opportunity to get on today. So let us start with Jerry. I'm going to promote you to a panelist. And there's Jerry. All right. So you can unmute yourself, put yourself on video and Let's have a talk. So my uh, audio is a little choppy, or uh, it's okay now. Okay. Um, I think that uh, in keeping with the previous session about money, I'm finding that um, I am. Uh, I don't know if I'm in my own way now. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that was happening over the last, I guess, month and a half. It's really exciting and now it's kind of just subsided and almost crashed so i'm kind of like oh no what did i do what's happened have i blown it um the opportunity or not opportunity but uh, the interactions i was having with a group of people have kind of come to an end so i'm kind of wondering where to go from here like should i still be going on this path and you know whatever other thoughts come with that you want to go on that path? I don't know why I don't, but I feel like I don't anymore. Okay. That, that's how disappointed I am. So do you not want to go on the path just to avoid disappointment? Hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, it's not coming up true. Okay. Well, whether you want to go on the path or not, the important thing here is the motivation behind you. And right now you're on away from motivation. You're trying to get away from something, which is avoiding disappointment. Okay. And whenever you're in away from motivation, you're creating restriction in your life. You're trapping yourself. So when you're on a path to something, Sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes there's going to be a lot of hard work involved. And, and sometimes it may not be. But when you get frustrated, when and, and that starts to really wear down on you, then you get into this place of avoidance of the frustration rather than shifting in, into a new space where how can we create less frustration? Right. Like there's a big difference between how do I avoid frustration to how can I create less of it? Right. Or, or even you know, how to, instead of how, how do I avoid frustration, how do I create more joy? How do I create more ease? Right. So that's a more positive thing. So oof. do you want to continue on this path if it involves frustration? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, that's the answer. Yeah. So are you willing to step out of the story that you need to avoid frustration at all costs? Yes. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> I thought that was going to shift. Okay. See, there's going to be frustration in life no matter what. Even if things are going well, every now and then there's going to be frustration popping up. So if you're avoiding frustration, you're avoiding life. Right. So is it worth avoiding life to avoid frustration? No. Again, not coming up true. So are you willing to destroy the belief that it's worth avoiding life in order to avoid frustration? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Okay. Energy there. Okay. So now let's Take it back a step. Are you willing to step out of the story that it's worth avoiding life and if you if it means avoiding frustration? Yes. That's better. Hmm. Right now, slightly further back, are you willing to step out of the story that it's worth avoiding success if it means oh. avoiding frustration? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah, you're the only one that's uh, resisting that one. <sighs> Can you say that again? Are you willing to step out of the story that it's worth avoiding success if it means avoiding frustration? Yes. Okay, how are you doing? Um, right now I, I feel neutral. Okay. I'm just, um, I guess, in, in the thinking of, of mm -hmm. what you said, I'm wondering then, like, does that, how does that, how do I say this? How does that affect your choices? Because in avoidance, that's how you make your choices. You'll say, <laughs> I don't want to do this because it'll probably turn out like this and I don't want that to happen. So then you won't do an action that you think is going to be too hard or but that's how you're making your choices okay i make my choices based on oh that sounds cool i'll do that oh okay that's different yeah <laughs> gotcha and if it's a choice between two things i'm not i'm not like well i don't want to do that so i'll do this i'm like this one sounds way better i'm going to do that gotcha that makes sense and that shift get, puts you in a, a better space it causes you to make better choices right and uh, and it gives you more lightness and possibility in your life okay thanks you're welcome all right let's put you back down and who else is around madeline let's promote madeline Hey, Madeline. Hey, Shiraz. What's going on? So, so, so I did a session with you around chronic migraines and felt like a lot of shift happened and I was doing better than I have for a really long time. And then, wham, I just got a killer one. Just seemed like out of the blue, like when I was feeling the happiest I have been feeling. Yep. Yeah. So... 
there must be some beliefs there around. Yep. You know, Are you allowed to feel happy? I thought I was getting to yes on that one. Okay. But, um, yes. Yes, it's not coming up true. <laughs> That's an interesting one, not allowed to feel happy. And that's the thing is, is when you're getting to that place, you're saying, well, I'm feeling the happy, happiest. Your subconscious is like, oh, we can't have that. Screw it. Edit. Let's give that migraine in there. Okay. So why is it wrong to feel really happy? I don't know. That feels scary to me. Okay. What's scary about happiness? That I guess when I've had times in the past when I was really happy, then something really horrible happened. Okay. So that's a story. It probably happened once you created the story and then you just make it happen over and over again. So are you willing to step out of the story that whenever you start to feel really happy, something horrible will happen? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. You start to move and you pull back. There's something there. Is it better? Is it better to avoid the happiness than to go through the horrible outcome? I guess so. Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. <laughs> When you're really happy, does someone else suffer? I don't know about that. I know last time we talked about the fact that I was no longer gonna be in my family camp if I was happy, because mm -hmm. they're not. So I, that's the closest I can come up to with. Is there only so much happiness to go around? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. That's an interesting belief to have. So are you willing to step out of the belief Ooh, step out of the, yeah step out of the belief that there's only so much happiness to go around yes <coughs> yeah so that's where the sec the first thing i asked you from when you have more happiness are you, are you taking away from someone else's happiness yeah yeah. So are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. So it's interesting because you're creating migraines for yourself out of compassion for other people because you're using up all the happiness except the belief itself is crap, right? So. Yeah. Okay. Because I always think about all the people who are suffering. Oh, stop thinking about them. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a harsh way. I'm saying it's not doing you any good, right? My, my rule is if I can't do anything or I'm unwilling to do anything to change the situation of people that are suffering, then I'm not going to worry about it. Right? So if I'm in a position to change it, then I'll think like, I'll donate money. I'll go help people. I'll, like, I'll do that. And, you know, and that's part of my job. But if I just sit there and go, going, okay, you know, I'm helping people, but there's so many more million of people, millions of people suffering, I'd be miserable. 
And that's going to affect how I, fu I function with you guys and show up in the world with you guys, which means I'll suck with you guys too. And then that's just no good for any, anyone. The other thing is it's, you know, it's hard for people that don't get this from the spiritual side, but everyone's creating their own reality. So everyone that's suffering is at some level choosing to suffer. So they can be influenced to not suffer, but, but some of them can't. Some people are enjoying the suffering. Some people love to talk about their suffering, right? And there's not much you can do for them. So when you just focus on, I'm creating joy in my life and I'm going to create joy in the life of people around me. You know, and again, not, you're not being responsible for them, but that's just, this is one, something I do. Then all that suffering goes away. And if instead of focusing on the suffering, you get a whole bunch of people creating joy and expanding that joy out, that joy is eventually going to wipe out all the suffering as it goes further and further out. And that's how we should be tackling these things. So are you willing, oh, wow. Are you willing to destroy the belief that you can't be happy while other people are suffering? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And are you willing to step out of the story that you should always be concerned about everyone that's suffering? Yes. Hesitation on that one. I know. <laughs> I want to. You want to, but it's... So who taught you that you have to be concerned about everyone that's suffering? parents okay so you're living in their story instead of creating your own are you willing to step out of their story that you're not allowed to be happy while people are suffering yes <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. Okay, how's that feel? Better. Cool. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see who else is here. Oh, look at all the attendees. Very happy. Uh, Victor. Boom. Hello, Victor. You need to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Hello, Shiraz, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I want to be happy. Uh, I want to feel joy and um, uh, I want to work less and uh, receive more. I want to enjoy life. I want to be happy. I want to... We can only tackle one thing right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. Um, um, uh, making decisions... Uh, uh, I find it also hard, uh, maybe it's this period of time, I find it also hard to, to be happy. Um, so yeah, this is something that I can discuss about. Um, uh, I am very much in my body. I, I, um, for, I, I can give an, a good example of this uh, when uh, uh, in the morning, if I don't do some exercise, run uh, in the morning or go to the gym, I don't... Uh, my body tells me that, uh, you know, it doesn't sing with me. It doesn't. Um, so I, I feel really great after I run or after. I, so I'm, I'm very much in my body and in, in, in the morning I need a, uh, something to do. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, what's going on. 
with me. So I find it sometimes uh, I, ha I have to remember, I have to pray, I have to uh, do it like a mechanical thing. I have to do it um, um, consciously, start being happy, think about uh, it, it. It doesn't go automatically. It doesn't, uh, you know, I have to remember, okay, I have to be happy. I have to be so thankful for everything that I have uh for for everything so here's what the issue is <clears throat> you believe you have to be happy and you don't and it sounds weird but as long as you have to be happy it's not a state it's it's a job right if you're just happy then there's no effort involved there's no reminding yourself so like okay i'm being happy but because you're like, I have to be happy. I've got to be thinking about this. I've got to be conscious. I've got to be eating right. I've got to be exercising. That's so much pressure. There's no joy in what you're doing to yourself. Right? So stepping out of this and just saying, you know, wow, I feel happy right now. That's great. If you don't feel happy, there's nothing wrong with not feeling happy. Because when you're, when you're saying I have to be happy, you're you tend to avoid or suppress any negative emotions. And that's actually not healthy for you. If you have an emotion, sadness, anger, frustration, you should have that emotion and express that emotion so that it processes and gets out of your body because then you will naturally come back to a happy state. But if you're sad and you're like, no, I'm supposed to be happy, I have to be happy, you're not processing the sadness and it's stuck in you. Yes, I feel very stuck, very, very stuck, I feel. Yes. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to be happy? Yes. Yes. Whenever I'm not happy, two things happen. Number, or there's two steps to it for me, I guess. Number one is I ask, is this emotion mine? Whatever emotion's coming, whether it's anger, frustration, sadness. Because we're all sharing stories, we're all sharing thoughts, beliefs, emotions. So if I'm feeling out of sorts, the first thing I ask is this, is this mine? And most of the time, it's not. It's like my neighbors or it's someone I just worked with or you know, it could be one of my friends that you know, I may not have even been talking to, but I'm just picking up on that because my awareness is out there. And then I'm like, oh, okay, if it's not mine, I'm just going to step out of it. And then it just goes away. So my advice always, always, always is if something's going on, first thing you want to ask is whose story is that? And if it's not yours, step out of it. The second thing is if it turns out to be mine, then I just let it process and then naturally come back to happiness. So do that more in your life and also get out of the have to for everything else. You don't have to exercise. You don't have to eat well. And I'm not saying go eat junk food and then just sit on the couch, but that have to is pressure on you. That have to is resistance. Right when you're when you get up and you go wow I really feel like ener energizing I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, sorry like exercise I want to go exercise, then it's not like oh I have to exercise because I got up it's like ah, I want to do this let's just do this, and there's more joy there's more lightness you're gonna you're gonna want to do it more often and it won't be a chore. Same thing with eating well, same thing with with anything in your life. Get out of the have to, get into the choosing to. Okay. Are you willing to step out of the story that the only way you can live a good life is if you force yourself to do everything right? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. OK. 
How's that feel? Good. I realize that uh, whenever I have to, I see like a perfect scenario and I remember that I am a perfectionist and I have to have everything perfect and it's life is not like that. Life is full of color, full of everything. It's not a perfect scenario. It will not, you know, never go into a perfect, we will never achieve a, a perfection. In the <laughs> well, and, and that's, that's true in some aspect, but it, the funny thing for me is I, I think the mess that is life, the mess that is the world around us is perfect to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yes, this is healthy. <laughs> okay, so are you willing to step out of the story that you have to be a perfectionist? Yes, I want to. Definitely, I want. I want, to, I yes, do no. not want yes, yes. <laughs> I want to be get out of this story of the perfectionist. I want to get out of this story. Oh. Okay. Cool. How are you doing? Good. 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 I feel good. All right. Thanks for playing. Thank you, Shiraz. You're welcome. All right, Ooh, we're running out of people. It's okay, we got time. Let's go to Mark. Well, hello. Hello. So with respect to my reality, things are shifting and it's really good. And yet, it's not quite shifting fast enough. I am still finding that I know, at some level, I feel like I know the right thing to do. But at another level, I'm not taking the steps. And I, I'm, I'm still not sure what the, what's holding me back. Okay. So what's on the other side of it? If you took all the steps and you got the results, what would happen? Wow. I felt that come up. That was like a, okay, that's weird. Is it, oh my God, I'd be successful. Oh no. That's yeah, horrible. I know. <laughs> the hell. Okay. That means there's a belief that I don't feel successful. Mm -hmm. What, what's involved with being successful? Ouch! You're really resisting with that question. Again, like I said, I, I, I can feel it. It's like, nah, crap. Um. So success for me is like. Things are flowing. I don't have to lament about a decision. I just, there's a decision in front of me. Oh, okay. Yes, no, do it, leave it, whatever it is. And I'm still like, oh, well, you know, I need to do more research. I need to think about that. Um, if you're successful, will you stop learning? I hope not. I feel like there's always more things to learn. Wow, you're actually not telling the truth with that. Really? That's an interesting shift for me. Are you willing to destroy the belief that if you become successful, you'll stop learning? Yes. Oh, that's a weird feeling. <laughs> okay. It's, it's just basically like you're drilling in on both sides here, but it's not like a re regular resistance thing. It's something else. It's different resistance. Great. Okay. Well, that's why we're here. What, what's about this different resistance? If you're successful, is there any need to learn? 
Yes. No, that's I not going up true either. Because the because I wouldn't want to get into a I'm successful and therefore I know it all. I get that. And I know you don't want to get into that, but if there's no need to learn, then it would just be doing it to show people that I'm not egotistical, even though I'm successful. Wow. So when you're, oh, if you're successful, do you have to work hard to show you're not an ego about it? Wow. That's coming up as yes. Yeah. Are okay. you willing to destroy that belief? Absolutely. <coughs> <laughs> yeah that's the stuff Ooh. If you're successful, do you have to work hard to disprove everyone that thinks you've let it go to your head? I really want to say no, I don't care. <laughs> but I don't think that's coming up as true. Yeah. So are you willing to destroy that belief? Ow. Absolutely. Oh yeah, now. <laughs> oh jeez. This is the weirdest feeling because it's clearing at the same time you're in resistance and it's hurting. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I got it. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh. These cat fur balls. <laughs> Did we start another round there? <laughs> Hold on. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling? Yeah, this is um shifty and good and like the it's gonna sound weird but i yeah i shifted to a place where i feel like i can go and sign up to facebook that's very weird that's crazy <laughs> yeah i know i know that's, yeah yeah and there's no like None of the last 10 years of resistance around that decision yeah. feels like it's there now. So for the people that don't know, Facebook has come up in several discussions and there's been a huge resistance on Mark's part. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, nah, it's there. All right. Yeah. That 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 is mm, that is a very different place to be. Yeah. What? Cool. And yeah, the other shifting and um I feel like the ones that we talked about shifted things that we didn't talk about, but shifted along the way. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like the, the pebbles shifted and they started the avalanche. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Of course, now I'm curious what the rest of the avalanche looks like. I'm sure I will find out in time. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I am definitely there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is it that? Oh, that's me. It's not you. I wonder if it's but there we go. Uh, Monica. There she is. Welcome, Monica. 
Hello. Hello. And if it's connecting, it seems like there's a delay. Oh, there we go. Uh, that works so much better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I think I have the right format here. I uh, hope I access the right way. My husband and I are looking to move forward with our business. Uh, and I guess there's some fear uh, surrounding that. Okay. Fear of? Fear of uh, being judged and feel, fear yeah. of uh, failure, failing. Okay. So the thing is both are going to happen. <laughs> so it just comes with, with the territory. So if you avoid them, you're going to avoid everything that results as, as of, of the, uh, the getting through the failure and getting through the judgment and all the success and all the benefits and rewards that come with it. So you're going to get judged no matter what you do. Okay. Whether you go forward or not, whether you have successes or not, people are going to judge you. That's what, just what people do. They judge. And we tend to think of judgment as a negative thing, but there's positive judgment out there too. So if your goal is to avoid judgment, your goal is to avoid everything. Okay. Mm. Now, there are three ways to handle judgment and 99% of the population uses the first two ways. So the first way is to reject the judgment. And this is usually when negative judgment comes in, but some people do with positive judgment. The people that say, if I say, oh, you're beautiful. And you're like, oh, stop it. I'm not so beautiful. That's avoiding judgment. It's avoiding positive judgment. But usually it's like, I don't really like you. Well, you should like me. I'm a wonderful person. That's avoiding negative judgment. <laughs> And that doesn't work because you're pushing against the energy of the person that's judging you. And that, that never turns out well, right? So it becomes a fight it, and it's draining and it stops you from doing certain things because you're trying to avoid these judgments or combat these judgments. So if someone gives you a judgment, um, don't try to fight back against it. But the other thing people do is they accept the judgment. And if it's a negative judgment, that's that's horrible because if I say, man, you really suck, you're like, oh my God, you're right, I do suck. Why do I even try? I suck. And then you're not going to create anything. But it can also be detrimental if I give you a positive judgment, because if I say, Monica, I think you're perfect. And you say, oh my God, thank you. And you take that on. Then it's not that you suddenly think you're perfect. You think that I think you're perfect. So you have to continue to try to be what I think is perfect. And you're not, you stop trying to be you. You're trying to be what I perceive as perfect. And that'll mess you up. <laughs> right? <sighs> okay. So that's why you don't want to accept the judgments from other people either. So you're not rejecting and you're not receptive, which is what most people do. So you want to be in the sweet spot where if I say anything to you, you say, oh, thank you. You acknowledge that I've had that judgment of you. And then you just let it go by. Even if it's a wonderful thing, I think you're so, you're so beautiful, Monica. You're just like, oh, thank you, Shiraz. But then you still function as you, not as someone that needs to be beautiful or be seen as beautiful, or be accepted as beautiful. You're just going to be you. Wow. Okay. And if I say something like, Monica, you're a bitch, she's like, oh, thank you, Shiraz. And I'll be like, wait, did you just thank me? But you just let it go by. <laughs> and it's all good. And you're in ease. And it doesn't matter what people think of you and how they judge you. Because most of what is coming at you in judgment, if not all, is, is basically coming from who I am in my world. And that has nothing to do with you. I'm just expressing what's going on for me. And you're letting it affect you if you try to resist it or accept it. Okay. Powerful. Thank you. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to avoid the judgment of other people? Yes, I am. <coughs> okay. Now let's look at failure. 
So it's almost, it's almost similar. If you're afraid of failure, then the best way to avoid failure is to just not do anything because then you don't get that sense. Well, I tried, but I failed. But for me, the true definition of failure is just never doing anything. Because at least when I'm, I'm making the attempts and even if they don't work out, I don't look that as, as failure. I look that, well, now I learned that I shouldn't do that. And now I learned that I've got a block here. And now I've learned that I don't want to work with that person until we get to a place where it's like, this is working. All right. And sometimes you get that success the first time, but very rarely is it on that first time. It's usually through these failure, 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 success. And there's that one thing with Thomas Edison. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard it so many times. You know, ten thousand times he learned, ten thousand ways he learned not to make a light bulb before he made a light bulb. Right. But that's that's how you want to be. Now, my only thing with failure is if you're getting repeated failure, trying to do things, you want to examine: Are you getting failure from what you're doing, or are you getting failure from what you're being? Because I found. If you shift a certain belief, then you can do the exact same thing and succeed at it because the belief is what's stopping you, not the action. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to avoid failure at all costs? Yes, I am. Now keep in mind you're working with your husband. So you're shifting these beliefs. He may not be shifting these beliefs. So if this starts to come up for you, the first thing you want to ask is, is this mine or is this my husband? Or is this someone else's? Whose story is this? And if it's your husband's, step out of it. And the cool thing is, whoever's belief is stronger wins. So if you're set in that, we're going to do this, it's going to be awesome, and there's nothing going to stop us, he'll buy your story instead of you buying his story. And you'll see him shift as you shift. And, and it's really the other way around. It's he's, have a, has a, he's at the higher vibration. It's usually me that's like, ah, yeah. So and, you're saying that I will, I should, my my energy will rise up to his belief, his thought pattern, basically. I'm probably not saying that, but I'll I'll rise up to where he is. Or further. Yes. Oh wow, you didn't like that. Are you allowed to have a higher vibration than him? Y- yes. Yeah, it's not coming up true. <laughs> I am allowed. I just don't, I, I haven't allowed myself to okay. get to where his beliefs are in regards to where he sees our business can go. Okay. What's wrong with getting that, that high? Um, it's, it's a new way of thinking for me, a new way of being. Okay. So do you have to make sure you're, you're slightly lower than your husband? No, I, I just think that, that I, because he's here in his belief system, I just, I, I feel like sometimes my beliefs isn't that strong. Yeah, but see, that's your story now, right? So you're sitting there going, well, he's here and I'm here, and that's your story. And because that's your story, you're going to lock yourself into that position. You're not going to let yourself come up to him because that doesn't match your story. So are you willing to step out of the story that your husband's always at a higher frequency than you? Yes, I am. (laughs) (sighs) How's that feel? Better, worse, same or different? Feels better. Okay, good. You can practice being a different way now. Absolutely. Okay. I'll be purchasing the book as well. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Mm. All right. Wow. Okay, how are we doing? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Florence. Hi. Hey. Um, okay, so I've been delaying my the meal plan and um I feel like I mean I tried it before it worked and I feel like I keep on self uh, sabotaging myself. And okay. I want to avoid that because um I think that's the main root you know, starting to go dating again, having a the self esteem, all those things. Um, the root cause, I feel like it's self sabotaging myself. So, uh, I haven't found why though. That's the only thing. Okay. So, what is it you want to do? I want to get rid of. Like, I want to tell myself it's worth it to do what I, what I need to do for myself. Okay, so it wasn't told me what you want to do. Oh, um, I want to go back into um, starting the meal plan again to, to not only eat healthier, but lose the weight that I've gained. Okay. Yeah. And why do you want to lose the weight? Um, because I don't fit in my clothes anymore. Okay. And... Um, also to get self, get back on my self-esteem and work on myself. Okay. So the interesting thing is that it's, it's kind of backwards. So if you feel you have to lose the weight to increase your self-esteem, you actually want to increase your self-esteem and that'll help you lose the weight. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So that's causing some shifts there. What's going to happen once you've lost the weight? Um, I feel like there might not be a change at all. Okay. A change in what? In like mentally, you know what I mean? Mentally and yep. emotionally. Physically, there will be a change, but I will stay the same. Okay. When I asked you about losing the weight, there was actually fear that was coming up. Okay. So what would be horrible or scary about losing the weight you want to lose? Ow. Uh, what would be horrible? Or scary. I don't know. Or scary. Um, that I might go back gaining the weight again okay so is it better to just not lose it than to lose it and then gain it back i guess so okay so this is this is what's going on because you you think you'll feel worse if you lose the weight and then gain it it's better for you just to stay exactly where you are which is the safe space yes that's how i feel yeah so as long as you're trying to be safe, you're not going to make any progress. You're not going to create anything. You have to be willing to lose the weight and then possibly put it back or possibly leave it off forever. You don't know at this point, but because you're not willing to go and find out, you're just staying exactly where you are. And that's why you're not staying on the meal plans, why you're cheating, because it's just safe exactly where you are. Trying to be safe is always going to limit you. Right? Okay. It's, it's, when you're safe, it's it's implying there's something to be safe from. There's always a danger. There's whether it's a blow to your self-esteem or a physical danger or something else. But when you step out of safety and into awareness, there's nothing about fear anymore. It's just, this is the action I'm going to take. Let's see how it goes. So are you willing to destroy the belief that it's better to not lose weight than to lose it and possibly gain it back? Yes. <laughs> I 
And this is coming up quite strong. Who is the weight protecting you from? Um, I'm going to have to be honest and say it for my parents. Okay. So if you lose the weight, you, then you lose protection from your parents. Not really protection. It's more like they'll be after me. They'll be after you? Yeah, sort of like, um, I don't know if you know this, but traditional Asian parents, they always say, oh, get married, get married. And, you know, after a certain age, they kind of pressure you more. Yep. So I feel like if I lose it, they'll be chasing after the fact. Okay. So this is, this is actually feels like the major reason you have the weight is just to avoid your parents and their judgments and they're chasing after you. Yeah, pretty much. So if you're in a position that you're strong enough to say, I don't care, I'm just going to do what I want. If I want to get married, I'll get married. If I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I don't care what you want. This is my life. Then you won't need the weight. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need the weight to protect you from your parents? Yes. <laughs> Remember, your parents are functioning from pre-programming of their culture. And they're trying to do what they've decided is best for you, but it's really what's safest and traditional for them. And when you get that and you can just say, well, that's just my parents running on programs. I'm not going to run on the same program. Then what they, what they say won't affect you as much. You won't feel bad about it. You'll be just like, well, look at them running their program. Right? And then you can just let them do it. And you know, whether it means you, you sit there and listen to it and just go, oh, okay, whatever, mom. Or it means you, you talk to them less whenever they bring it up, which is, you know, it's an option to you. Then um, it's going to change how the dynamic and it's going to change what's important in your life. Because right now you're functioning on staying safe and protecting yourself. And you want to move into a place of expansion and creation and what's possible rather than how do I keep staying safe? Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that staying safe is what's most important right now? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, how do you feel? Uh, my head hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it it feels hit. heavy, yeah. Okay, so just let that process. Okay. Let's see how you do. All right, now, thank you. You're welcome. So to the people that had the shifts today, The shift may hold, or if you get really uncomfortable with it, even though it's a better space, you may try to backslide and go back to the way you were. So this is why I offer a monthly magic program where you get doses of these shifts every single month. And if you would like to enroll in that, you can go to my website, energeticmagic.com and look up the monthly magic page. Uh, again, my book is on sale right now for 99 cents, and there are a lot of other great programs here on the Breakthrough Show. I invite you to explore Breakthrough Show and see what's available. Jump on the shows. There's always great content and amazing guests that show up. And other than that, I am doing a webinar tonight at nine o'clock. You are invited to come join me for that. You can go to uh, Energetic Magic on Facebook or energeticmagic.com and look for events and, and find that, sign up for it. And we're going to have some more fun tonight. It'll be another hour session. Thank you for being on. This was great. We had some amazing shifts. And I know the people I chose, that stuff went out to so many other people that are watching and, and listening to the replays and watching live. So I will be back the last Monday of September. Have an amazing life. Be well, be aware, and be magical. <laughs>